And another happy, happy hour to everyone. Um, my name's Phil Bean. I'm here with Mac underscore Gamble. And it's been another exciting week in the online coaching world. And I'm going to come straight out with some, some interesting news that I think is going to affect all of us in one way or another. If we're doing anything with email, um, coming from Apple's annual developer conference, uh, WWDC, it's kind of snuck in there, I feel like. But, you know, if you follow other marketers on the internet, you might see that they're in a bit of a tizzy. Um, but basically, Apple, in their infinite wisdom and the infinite control they have over their own tools, like email, um, have decided that they're no longer going to enable marketers to track open rates or senders to track open rates on emails. They're going to block that for privacy reasons. So there you go. <laughs> so what does this mean for you? If you're engaging clients with email, good luck. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh man. Yep. So this is going to have some pretty interesting implications and it's crazy. I didn't, I hadn't heard of this until you mentioned it, no, but no. it's something that Oh my God, I think of so many organizations I know and coaches I know that are still engaging clients with email. And you have to ask yourself, what percentage of clients are using Apple products or Apple software, you know, e the email client kind of just torpedoed the entire thing. I mean, I, what do we do? Do we just pack up and go home at this point? Or do we do we persevere? Do we look for new yeah, options? Yeah, no, I mean, so the, the baselines definitely change immediately. That's the obvious thing. Um, you're going to find out pretty quickly that a chunk of people that you're sending stuff to are using Apple Mail. Um, and then, you know, I've seen knee-jerk reactions across the internet of marketers writing blog posts about what this means and, you know, the the consistent thread is like you know how do we figure out how to use click click tracking as the primary method of tracking you know as the primary measure of engagement uh with email and that means you know one one really interesting i think element of this that i'm not sure was fully thought through or you know hey listen internet privacy is a good thing um i'm glad they're you know taking that seriously um but you know if you think about newsletters, for example, and the primary value of a newsletter is not to be clickbaity and mm -hmm. send you a bunch of links to a bunch of bullshit, it's to send you really interesting, informative stuff. And that person who's running the newsletter needs to know that you're opening that stuff to know that you're interested in that stuff because they're just trying to send you something to, to break down to read a lot of times that's just a text-based newsletter. Well, th that person is... Mm -hmm particularly in the crosshairs here and going to have a harder time um, and going to have to kind of go on faith with a lot of stuff or shift their strategy into yeah. something more click oriented. Um, so, you know, there's, I think, I think us speaking to coaches and creators, there's a lot of folks out there who are probably going to experience some pretty major changes and need to pivot a little bit because of I, this um, and potentially look to other ways to engage their audiences. I feel like Apple just turned engagement from something that was maybe a, a um, kind of multi-phase, multi-levels of, engage, you know, engagement doesn't have to take one shape. It can be, you know, a person consuming content can be highly engaged even if they're not clicking on something mm -hmm. to something that now is binary from the eyes of someone putting out content. It's you're either clicking on it or you're not. Yeah. And in that case, now you're talking about a huge gray area in the middle that I guess my question, and you kind of just touched on this, is this the the catalyst for the migration off of email? Are we now going to see kind of like the unbundling of Facebook we talked about? Yeah. Is this where everyone in the coaching world says, peace, I'm out and yeah. looking for new systems? It's a real possibility. I mean, and, you know, to be fair, the systems that you're looking to need to be sophisticated enough to kind of track that stuff to make sure they're filling that role. But um, when you look to, you know, to systems to deliver content, you know, there are inherently more engaging things to use than, than email for sure. But sometimes, you know, they're harder to onboard clients onto, for example, or there, there's more friction in the way there on the front end, um, than there would be with email, which, you know, everybody has an email address. That's why there's no friction there. Mm -hmm. You know, capture an email address, you're good to go. Um, but, you know, I think, I think, a lot of people 
it's it's going to be time to take a hard look at that. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I think that was already happening. So I don't know yep. if it's as much of a sea change, at least a, a like like a, a flip of a switch um, all at once, but it will accelerate things for sure. Um, sort of like the pandemic accelerated Zoom account mm-hmm. <laughs> adoption. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's interesting because if you think back, <clears throat> I'd say early on engagement was, you know, there's a lot of reliance or heavy reliance on email, text, and Facebook. Mm-hmm. And it was because that's where people were to your point of least friction. That's where people are. Let's leverage what they are. But you'd have to say that either new regulation or changes of company policies. So you think about, you know, things Facebook has done with data privacy has really pushed people off Facebook. Uh, regulations around how you can use phone numbers and engage people through text in terms from like, I think, I can't remember the, I think there's an acronym to it of the regulation that came out, Yeah, but now it's really difficult to engage, <laughs> yeah, engage people through text message now. And then this with email, I almost wonder now, are we just going to see a fundamental shift towards, and this is going to be kind of the catalyst for, okay, online coaching systems, you know, where, where maybe there was some hesitation from, you know, a segment of the market for, for a period of time. Um, I think less over the past year with the unbundling of Facebook, I think that was a huge step, but now it's to me, if I'm engaging somebody, I, I, Email now no longer seems like an option. I mean, I, I've, I've been a huge advocate of email from a marketing standpoint. Now I'm, I'm starting to see, I'm starting to ask, what's, what, what do we do with email now? Yeah. And I think, you know, for, for marketers, it's a different answer than for someone like a coach, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. You know, managing those direct kind of client relationships or something close to it where you want it to feel that way. It's, becomes more and more of a challenge there um you know i think with with this change i do think you know we all have to take a hard look at okay if we have a very clear purpose um for sending something out want to drive people to a specific location still a great use of email um but we're going to be living and dying by the kind of click-through rate and monitoring that for to measure success on basically everything um and that's fine. You know, that's the the primary mm-hmm. engagement metric for when you are sending something that is, mm-hmm. you know, critical to drive people towards that you're driving people into to a specific thing. So it's not dead. It just hurts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not dead. It just hurts. There you go. You heard it here first. Uh, but it's definitely, I mean, it's mm-hmm. going to be interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of postulating at this point too. I, I don't, I don't know what it's going to feel like when those numbers just sort of change suddenly yeah. and, you know, active campaign and MailChimp and all the, all the email <laughs> management platforms. It'll be really interesting. To your point, I think there's still value from a marketing standpoint. So if you're someone who still uses kind of <clears throat> traditional funnel mentality, maybe is the way I'll say it, where you've been building your email list and you're kind of nurturing your email list with, you know, potential clients, like your lead list, if you will. I still think there's value in, you know, and, and yes, you may be monitoring engagement a little bit differently, but I, I would have to now say if you've been using email as your pri- as, as a primary method of education distribution to clients, I would just have to think now you, you can't use that anymore. I feel like it's it's now it's so binary. If if now we're requiring people to click on things to show that they're engaged. I just think it's a, it's a slippery slope now. I think it's going to be a tough world to go down. Yeah. Hell of a lot harder. Uh, we'll take some serious assessing of whether it makes sense. And, you know, since there's a lot of uncertainty, at least for, for me, I would imagine there, there will be for a lot of people out there. Um, and, you know, like you said, you hadn't heard about this yet. There's a bajillion coaches who haven't heard about this yet. Mm -hmm. Um, who it's just going to like show up in their, their email marketing platform or what, a, you know, whatever yeah. they're using, they're just going to think it's broken all of a sudden. <laughs> and then what do they do? <laughs> we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, but do you, do you think the dashboards on these platforms now, when you, when you like open MailChimp or active campaign now, there's just a, an emoji of like a face with its hands up. Like who knows? <laughs> if you're watching the YouTube right now, you can actually see us doing this. Um, kind of a crapshoot. 
when you're pumping content out now. Yeah. Um, so that's a that's an exciting bit of news. Um, but to be fair, I think I think email has been the safety blanket for. I'm, I'm going to call it the safety blanket for businesses and consumers for a long time. I I think yeah, there's as you know, included. You've seen the well. You see the creation of all these new systems and platforms over the past 10, 20 years that are are designed to help drive better experiences, better engagement in different ways. And I think we've always, I think humanity has reverted back to email on so many occasions and email has been completely bastardized. It's, it's completely misused from how it was designed initially that maybe this is ripping the bandaid off that we all need to say, Hey, look, email was a great stepping stone to where we are now, but time to kind of evolve to the next stage. And I, I'll be curious to see where it takes us, but maybe we needed this. Maybe this is a good thing. We'll see. We'll see for sure. Um, so that's playing out in the background. And I thought, you know, and you thought um, it would be an interesting kind of transition point where we could talk a little bit about kind of the role of data um, in coaching programs and, you know, organizational efforts to um, deliver coaching programs and, you know, this is certainly a direct correlation, right? A direct connection between, you know, <laughs> and you're losing your ability to track engagement in one system. Does that mean it makes more sense to uh, jump to another system and start looking at that? And if so, how do we look at data? What, where do we need to, to start with a conversation about how we're strategically using data in those coaching relationships? Well, yeah, I yeah. mentioned this is... I had a conversation yesterday with a partner, a couple of partners are talking about kind of this question is how, how, how should coaching businesses be using data? And it was a really interesting question because I don't get asked that very often. And they were kind of, excuse me, thinking about it in two different ways. It was how should coaches be using data to drive their coaching, which I think is a question that should be asked way more. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, True. I think there's not enough written about this. Like I, I feel like it's something that is the world has shifted to online um, for online coaching, I would actually argue, I think a lot of people still don't know how to use data for their coaching. So I think that's one piece of it. The other piece was looking at it as an organization with multiple coaches and having to report out to their clients because they were dealing with more like selling to populations. Um, what is the role of data in kind of reporting out to their customers, like co the companies they cater to? What does that data look like? Um, so there was kind of data in several different ways. And I think we could probably do multiple episodes around each one of those different buckets. But I think in terms of as the actual coach, how to use data, I thought that was an interesting question because I think typically what we see is that people will start with the idea of, I need data to provide better feedback to you, my client. Therefore, I'm going to have you track everything about yourself every day. That seems like that's kind of the default. And yeah. That's just kind of what we see. And yeah. I would argue that is not the right way to create an online coaching experience. I think that's, that's safe to say for sure. And yeah, I, it is, it, that is tricky. I think, I think the idea of data is such a powerful pool for coaches. It, it's sort of like, man, I don't know. It, it, it's almost like they can't prevent themselves, stop themselves from seeing just like, oh, what if I had this perfect information? Um, mm -hmm. I would know everything I need to know. Um, and I can't kind of turn that off and think about the other side of the coin, which is you're never going to get perfect data, especially if you're creating mm -hmm. a clunky experience for clients and they don't want to participate in giving you that clunky mm -hmm. information that they're having to pass through. So if, you know, as a coach, you're setting up a tracking protocol on a system like nudge, you know, you can end up with 10 trackers on a card, for example, and you can imagine being a client in that mm -hmm. situation and every day going through and tapping on each one and entering your information when do you really need that in order to kind of facilitate change in that in that client's mm -hmm. life? And it, are they not focused on something more specific than that at any given time? Mm -hmm. And 99.9% .9 of the time with the coaches that we work with, I can tell you for sure they're working on something more specific than that at any given mm -hmm. time. And they don't need all of that data in order to facilitate those specific changes that are happening mm -hmm. at that time, um, at least not at the granular level. And what I mean by that is you can, it's, it's one thing to be tracking like, 
you know, I got 2,500 calories yesterday versus I had Mm -hmm. three servings of vegetables uh, versus do you feel like you ate well yesterday? Yes or no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there are whole different levels of the amount of kind of engagement and input on the part of the client that you can ask for. They can either make their experience, you know, kind of nice. And when you don't need the granular information, they can just tap on it and get out of the way really quick. And, you know, they're, you know, still generally on track and feel good about it. Um, and so you need to be mindful of kind of what, what the client is going to yeah. experience there. Yeah. And I, I think, so with respect to kind of the, the companies I mentioned that I had that call with this week, I think some of the interesting takeaways were thinking about what, what is kind of needed and work your way backwards. So for instance, I think in their case, it was, Hey, we need to provide, we need to, we need to actually illustrate changes to back to the company. So that if, if you need to actually illustrate change, that means you actually need to start getting kind of a benchmark and, a, you know, assessing someone, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to mean daily tracking. I think sometimes people kind of jump to daily tracking, which not to say you can't do really lightweight, easy to engage methods of daily tracking. But I think that was an example where it's like, okay, well, if you're putting people through say a multi-month program, it was like, okay, we need to at least do a benchmark at the beginning, ask a few questions and then reassess them throughout the, throughout it Mm -hmm. um, to show change. So that was kind of one piece of it. But I think if you're thinking about data from actual coaching, it's, there's some different ways to look at it. To your point, it doesn't have to be kind of the, you know, hyper granular information from the client input day in and day out. I think even just, I'm a huge fan of like daily yes, no questions of like, did you follow the product or like, did you have the healthy day to day or did you complete everything I needed you to? Um, the like my use of multiple choice questions. I, I'm just a yeah. huge fan of simple to engage methods. And so some, some other ideas that kind of came out of that conversation, were doing things like if you're pumping out a lot of content cards of um, kind of a comp, you know, you're using this as a method to track engagement, but you're also using it as a way to find interesting ways to engage the client in in ways that maybe don't feel like tracking really it's kind of like tricking people and it's kind of like the whole idea of tricking people to exercise kind of thing it's like the same type thing um so you know if you have them reading or consuming some kind of content not just asking them did you read this yes or no you know it's did you did you find this helpful or um, how would you rate this content or, you know, something that's kind of a qu- more of a quiz or a question because people enjoy that kind of stuff from Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's such a good point. And that's a, that's a great example of it even ties back to the kind of the email conundrum, right? Yeah. If we're, we can't measure opens and we're measuring clicks, um, a click is just kind of a blah, you know, I, I clicked on it. It doesn't mean anything necessarily beyond that. Um, but, you know, in, nudge, for example, get a card, open it up, see what's in there and respond to something like, was this content relevant to you? Did you find this helpful? How would you rate this on one to five? You get in the kind of, did they engage with that, but also some valuable bit of information on top of it. And it's just one action still. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's not harder on the client. It's getting you more specific information. Um, you're not getting open rates from email anyway. So there's a lot of kind of added value that you can kind of start to see piling on, even to delivering content through different systems where you have a more direct connection, uh, with clients. Yeah. The, the, one of the other questions that came out of it too, was thinking about how you, you know, like I said, as the coach, how do you act on that information that's coming in? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things I always kind of point to when you're thinking about online coaching is for one, just changes of in trends of you know so if, if you're having a person just let's take that example of just kind of rating daily content almost as if they're consuming it or um something light and easy in that way where if all of a sudden you see that's no longer happening or people are missing more days each week like that's a really easy sign of maybe something's going on or you know also too if we think about program optimization also too that's an easy way for you to start identifying and this is where i think the changes with apple are, are pretty devastating because clicks alone tell you something, but now you're really missing a lot in terms of how, in, you know, we, I think there's a lot of other signals that are being lost now from your content and kind of what content's working, what's not. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're thinking about, in, you know, system like Nudge, it's kind of card-based, 
you know, if you're able to kind of have users rating content as they're going through it, you're able to then optimize those cards moving forward. Um, same can be said probably for other systems too, but I think that's an interesting way as a coach to under, understand kind of how a person's engaging and where you need to spend your time. Um, I think from an organization level, it's, I think that that's an interesting thing you can kind of coach coaches up on if you're kind of monitoring that kind of information. But I don't know, there was some, like I said, it was an interesting conversation and I think more people should think about kind of working backwards there. If, take about the data that you need to have at your fingertips as an organization and then make sure you kind of build a tracking experience that kind of caters to that, but is also easy for the user. And that balance is really difficult. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, working, I mean, I think just big picture, working backwards from a goal is probably one of the most useful tools you can you can throw at challenges like this. So um, yeah, I think, I think that's absolutely great advice. Um, and it, I think it, it's relevant for just the, how do you use data in coaching question? How are you incorporating tracking into, into coaching relationships specifically? And the question there on top of like, what is the goal is, you know, do I always need this granular data? Mm. Because, you know, the client experience in 2021, the year of the client experience, mm. <laughs> got it. Um, <laughs> you need to be mindful of, of, what your clients are, what you're putting your clients through, what you're asking of them, because they're not going to want to participate long-term in something that they view as just tracking for the sake of tracking. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, you know, and now, you know, with Apple's changes, I would argue it's kind of really pushing more and more towards creating unique experiences. Like it, I, as I mentioned, you really can't be as reliant on these legacy systems anymore because Apple, Facebook, text, I mean, there have been, I think the industry is being forced into more innovative solutions, which I think is a good thing for everybody. It's a good thing for clients, but it's kind of interesting to see where I think most would argue that this is, it's taken way too long for coaching to kind of catch up. And now it's like all of a sudden over the past year, it's like kind of someone kicked, kicked us on the butt. And now all of a sudden we're kind of going a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll only speed up from here. I can tell. Um, good thing I have a vacation for a week coming up. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Vacation. That probably means no podcast next week. Oh, yeah. That's probably fair. Um, I may be plugged in on Friday, but I don't know how good the internet's going to be. Um, so that remains to be seen. Yep. Probably not. We'll see. Well, all right. So interesting with Apple. I think that's something we keep our eyes on. I think we write a blog post about it, too. I think that would be a good blog post. Well, now I have to, because you said it on the podcast. I know. So. I'll just have to commit you to doing all kinds of things. There on the we podcast. go. Keep going. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's something, let's keep our eyes on it. If anyone else has any kind of thoughts on it, shoot us a note, um, any questions, any ideas. Um, you know, we'll probably all just kind of panic about it offline. Um, but it's it's something, like I said, for us to keep our eyes on, because it's something that's going to have implica huge implications for the way in which we're all engaging, not just clients, but also to the way we grow our business. So yeah. we'll have to go get through it together. That's definitely where, you know, this is sort of a, a reactionary podcast for sure. Um, this conversation, especially on the email side. Um, I haven't totally wrapped my head around it yet. I don't think it'll be even jarring when we start seeing kind of the impact of it um, for, for me and I'll be prepared for it. But, you know, like, I think one of the funnier things to think about is like, okay, you know, we've worked forever on optimizing subject lines to increase open rates. Like to some extent, do we, I mean, we can still kind of tell, but we'll, it'll be interesting to see like what having one of the by far most popular email platforms, not tracking opens does to that. Will others follow suit? And will that just like in the future, will we be referring back to old analyses that we used to do on, on open rates and like now <laughs> it's clicks or nothing <laughs> clicks or nothing. So it's, it's interesting. Um, I can only imagine there's going to be some really disheartening moments for folks when they send out it in for people that don't have a huge email list, you know, you put an email out and now if you can't even track opens, there's probably going to be some interesting mornings where you check the analytics and you see you have zero clicks and, it's disheartening. You know, people probably read it and got good value out of it, but if no one clicked on something, yep. does that mean, you know, 
Goose different egg. strategy. <clears throat> I mean, I yeah. like literally still off the top of my head, I'm at the level of like, you know, do we switch up what we're doing and everything is like a really quick, concise email with a call to action on it. And we're just trying to get people to pay. Does everything start getting clickbaity? That That yeah. does make me wonder, is the idea now that... <laughs> Is it all teaser? Is it kind of like Twitter? Is it all just several sentences, uh, big call to action, get a person to a landing page? Aha, uh -huh. I like it, yep. Mike. So no more long form emails. I would actually argue are long form emails dead. Wow. That was the sound of my mind <laughs> exploding, just so everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I mean, I think, like I said, interesting what people are going to do now moving forward um when did this is this is this change rolled out i mean is this all rolled out at this point the update i don't think it's rolled out no I, um but i don't know the timeline on it off the top of my head we'll have to look into that um, so i guess that means everybody's now going to like panically run to their email marketing platform and start blasting their clients and blasting their leads with all kinds of content until that update goes out <laughs> It's very possible. Um, don't panic, but start thinking about your strategy now. Don't uh, panic, but panic. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was an uplifting episode. <laughs> Super uplifting. No, no, no. I, I mean, I think this is, I think what we kind of got to make sense, right? I mean, the whole, I think the idea of, okay, change the way we do it. Email now is going to be more concise, quicker, call to action, get people to the landing page so you can kind of track everything. Yeah. Um, and shift to more engaging ways to engage people um, like coaching apps, like yeah. platforms that are designed to actually manage that relationship. Um, yeah, absolutely. Which for anyone that has been engaging their clients through email, let me just throw this out there. Is there a colder way to engage a person than email? I can't really imagine it. And other than, no, I can't even think of it. That is the coldest way to engage somebody. So I'd say in some cases, this may have been a good thing. This was ripping the bandaid off. But it's still, it would have been nice if you, we could have all made the decision on our own of when we were going to make the transition versus kind of abruptly being forced to do it. So that's a good take. I like when we have strong opinions about things, and that's probably a hill that we should be dying on that email is a bit cold if you're actually in a coaching relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, Mac. Um, I think we're we're winding down here. Um, we've got some good things coming up, so stay tuned. Um, even when I'm out of town, office hours are still happening every Thursday at noon Eastern, Eastern, Eastern time U.S. Um, so tune into that next week. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the magic of white labeling and the kind of workflows even that you can create. I think we'll get into that a little bit um, while I'm away. So Mac, I'm signing you up for things while uh I, I don't think workflows were anywhere on the agenda of the content we were planning <laughs> but i'll 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 look at it things that you can do with a white label app uh yeah. true that does touch on white labeling you're right about them yeah there's it's a little bit in there um so anyway tune into that <laughs> um again we may or may not come back with another episode of this next week but if we don't we'll get around to another one soon after that and um until then subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify all your favorite ones if it's something like apple that takes ratings give us a nice rating we'd appreciate it say hi to us and you can always email me if you have any questions at phil at nudgecoach.com i think that's it that's it hope all everybody right. has a good Thanks, weekend guys. we'll see you again next time